Hello everyone, this is Jason Edelman, and I'll be talking about a 1PK application. This is my first one that, for now, I am calling uh, the Network Control Manager. And based on overall functionality, it might, the scope might be expanded in the future, the name may change, but for now, I'll be going by the name Network Control Manager. First, I mentioned this is going to be, or is a 1PK application, but what is 1PK? So 1PK is a Cisco SDK that is going to be used to interact with network devices. So right now, traditionally, you know, there's SNMP, there's CLI, um, you know, we access the network devices via SSH, via, via Telnet, and certain commands are different for network devices. Right, so if you're dealing with Cisco devices, it could be different, you know, again, different command to retrieve uh, some sort of data or make a change on a device for iOS versus iOS XR, NX OS, and so forth. So 1PK is, is a way to have a layer of abstraction and not really worry about a particular OS the device is running anymore, but have a common framework for communicating with that device. And that's communication two ways. So that's being able to retrieve data from a device in real time, as well as programmatically make a change in real time uh, to that device. So the and is, is really key because many times, you know, we either focus on programming a device and potentially using a different tool for extracting real time data from a device. But with 1PK on Cisco devices, there is that ability to leverage 1PK for two-way programmatic access to the device. My first 1PK application, like I mentioned, is the Network Control Manager. So my first goal was, hey, you know what, I want to learn 1PK, but how do we build something relevant? So I wrote, I wrote my goals down, and I wanted something that could improve the overall operational efficiencies of all types of networks. You know, right now in the world of programmatic interfaces and SDN, there's a lot of focus in the data center. So this tool, this application, should have relevance across both the data center, WAN, and LAN. And because 1PK abstracts the OS, it can be used across any Cisco device that supports 1PK. Another goal is to reduce the box by box management. Now, when you think about managing a network, if you want to get let's say the serial number, or you want to check links, you know, link status, and if you want to look at the different neighbor adjacencies across the devices in the network, typically network guys are going and, and network guys and gals go into every device across the network, you know, individually. So it's SSH to this device, then that device, then that device, and correlate that data to try to troubleshoot. Now, how do we make that more efficient? How do we decouple a CLI in management? from individual network elements to a single console that abstracts the network going forward. So, you know, again, the whole mindset really is to, you know, look at the network as a system versus, or manage it as a system versus managing it box by box, right? So we shouldn't be limited to a CLI locked into the device. You know, we should have the ability to use a CLI, you know, and or a GUI. And that, that should be determined based on the users managing the network. If it's a very large scale network, most likely a CLI or a, a definitive way to manage the network, it's going to be preferred over managing a GUI. So, you know, if we look at, do we want to use, you know, a CLI? or clicks or you know clicking buttons around the screen and again the more clicks you have the more cumbersome it may become so being able to write scripts and leverage a cli uh, is still going to be common going forward most likely and i wanted to have an application that that made a gradual shift in the network industry that you know first focused on basic things on retrieving data right so this is retrieve only so think of this as monitoring or read-only access, where we you know, ease the fear of network admins with programming the network. There's a lot of fear right now on you know, giving up access to the network to programmers, and that really shouldn't be the mindset that we have, because you know, it should be the network teams that have network-savvy programmers to help make management 
and a network administration and network architecture more efficient than we have today. But what can be built with one PK? And traditionally, you know, you know, I know I do personally as well as working with Cisco. We try to keep the idea, you know, limitless. Say, hey, you know, build anything you can think of. But you know, very few concrete examples actually exist that are practical. So you know, you know, it's really time for less, you know, pie, you know, pie in the sky integrating SDN controllers with you know business applications. You know, why don't we focus on integrating with IT applications and even before that, improving the operational efficiencies on managing a network that's a LAN, a WAN, or a data center network. You know, we, there's so many tools that IT folks use today that it could be very powerful to integrate IT tools, uh, cloud tools, you know, cloud orchestration tools first, and then once that is integrated, then hey, maybe then, you know, we go and integrate to a higher level of intelligence in terms of uh, business integration. And, you know, really I want to see is you know, how do we leverage one PK to help a, a day in the life of an IT admin or IT slash network admin, right? So these were some of the goals and, you know, that we talked about in the previous slide. And here we're talking about, you know, what can be built with one PK. So the network control manager is the application that I built here. So here we see a very high level overview. We see three tiers. That's very common in the world of SDN. The bottom tier are the network devices or network elements. You know, these could be switches, these could be routers, it doesn't really matter. All they have to do is be able to support uh, the one P, you know, the one PK agent on the device. These devices are communicating to the network control manager. This is the core application that was built here. And the network control manager can really be thought of as an SDN controller. Now, if you think of it as a network uh, SDN controller, the southbound protocol being used here is 1PK, where very commonly in the industry, open flow is being used and talked about. But here, in this case, with Cisco devices, there's the capability and ability to leverage 1PK between the controller and network device. And going above the controller, communicating with control programs or consuming applications, would be an open northbound API. And if we dive in a bit deeper in terms of programming languages and how this is architected and built out, you know, we see that this is primarily built and tested with virtual routers running one PK agent, and these are all running on my host machine. The network control manager application itself that can be thought of as an SDN con controller is built in the Grails framework. So Grails, you know, Grails makes it very easy to expose northbound APIs to consuming applications. The application code itself is written in Groovy and Groovy is a dynamic programming language based on, on Java actually so what's the benefit there? Well, the huge benefit is being able to leverage the native Java 1PK libraries. So here, if we combine all of this, we have the Grails framework being able to leverage Groovy and native Java in a single application. In essence, ultimately building a controller in itself if we want it. So, so the actual use of the application will not come through the network control manager. This is where we, tr you know, this is where you know we try to follow the model of a three-tier architecture in the world of SDN. So the CLI application on top is written in Python. So the Python application is the CLI. The CLI executes commands like show commands, and those are restful calls to the network control manager, and then the, the network control manager communicates with one PK back to the network device. And here as a joke, you can see my, my asterisk in the, up top in the, you know, in the center that I've defined you know, the JE northbound API, fully opened, right? I'm not trying to hide anything here. It's just fully open, you know, fully, fully open. 
and it's not closed source. So, but you know, right now it is only me who has who has the data here, and there aren't many APIs or, or many URIs that are defined here. But you know, once one PK becomes uh, fully public, I'll be more open to you know posting the code and uh, being able to collaborate on the application itself. And because this is a controller architecture, and that the CLI is an application that's built off of the APIs on the controller it's very easy to go ahead and build a, a next generation Web 2.0 GUI on top of the controller as well. So right now the focus has been on the CLI, uh, just because you know, I really think that you know, network admins have been sort of turned off in the past by fancy GUIs and whatnot. So hey, you know what? Let's preserve what network guy is like, but create it, create it better, right? Create a, you know, a CLI application server and create a one-stop shop for managing devices. And you'll be able to see this more during the demo, but instead of logging in and managing devices, device by device by device, or extracting data per, you know, by, you know, per device, you'll be able to log into a single console and being able to, in real time, uh, you know, see real time data and programmatically interface with the overall network, not just a network device anymore. So that's really the high level architecture of what's been built here. Over the next few slides, I'm gonna go through them real quick. This is just for some of the folks look at the slide deck only and don't have a chance to actually listen to me uh, talk through it on the slide. It's a recap of, again, of Network Control Manager as a controller, but the control plane here remains on each network element. And, I, and I've said recently, uh, to a few folks, and I've written about it in the past, that there's a lot of debate on how much control plane is extracted from each network device and put into a controller. And while that's that may be important down the line in terms of what can be built, one of the most important pieces is having a unified place to integrate with the network. And as a few examples, if you want to integrate unified communication applications with the network, with the voice network, they're integrated to an IP PBX. If you want to integrate net, you know, applications to the world of uh, server virtualization, they're integrated through vCenter. If you want to integrate applications to the wireless LAN, if they're location tracking, uh, security services, or RFID, they're typically integrated to the controller. So here, the focal point is we don't have to change the control plane just yet, but we can leverage something like Network Control Manager to integrate to third-party applications to dynamically retrieve data as well as to make changes to the network. And just to recap our previous slide, pretty simple, straightforward here. In closing, I would like to just I'll say if anyone has any questions, any comments on what you've seen, feel free to email me, DM me on Twitter, contact me however you'd like. I'm definitely open to feedback and looking for improvements across the way. And as time goes on, as 1PK comes out and is fully public, I would love to really expand on what we can do with something like this industry-wide. And that being said, I cannot forget to give a special thanks to uh, Nitin Kana. Uh, Nitin and I uh, started communicating uh, over Twitter and email a while back, and then most recently we were uh, talking again, and you know we just sort of collaborated on uh, the Python uh, CLI UI for uh, the Network Control Manager, and um, you know, Nitin put together the first version of that. And so just a big thanks uh, to Nitin. And I really want to close with. Just you know, saying there's you know there's you know a big talk in the industry on what network engineers have to be able to do with programming, and it, there isn't really a requirement to do anything just yet. But what I want to say is, if I can do this, you can too. You know, I'm a traditional network guy. You know, CCIE got it years back, um, but I, you know, over the past few months, I really have to say, you know, you know, diving into software development and different programming languages like Java, PHP, Py, you know, Python, Groovy, the Rails framework, all, all these things. It's just a learning process. And what it really comes down to is time. 
where just as somebody who has a CCNA or CCNP or beyond, there was time put into study to learn that material. And you know, all that really takes is the same amount of time or the same amount of dedication to learn something new. And uh, going forward, it's just a matter of you know, picking a task or picking a project and going after it. You know, it could take four hours, it could take eight hours, it could take a few weeks, it doesn't really matter that if you have the desire and have the want to, to try to tackle something in the programming world, go for it. And I know I've, I've learned a ton over the past few months and it's extremely humbling because I still feel like I don't know that much in this world. But as you can see, you know, things are coming along slowly and you know, all it really takes is sort of the idea to try to build something. And then from there, hopefully uh, something good comes out of it. So, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And hopefully I will have more for you in the next uh, few weeks and few months. All right. Until then, uh, thanks again.